everybody doing today welcome to my thursday live stream where we talk about photography what's new what's going on and and uh, today we have a special guest on my stream uh, some of you may have seen him in the chat section he's uh, one of my moderators and uh, we've become very good friends over the last couple of years since uh, joining his photo club that uh, and i've talked about that um, you know a couple times that it's really one of the best things i've ever done is is joining a photo club uh, but before we go any further, let me um, just do a sound check and video check, make sure everybody can see and hear me. Everything's good. If somebody could leave something in the chat for me, I'll give that uh, it's about a 20 second delay from when you type something to when I actually see it here. But like I was saying, while I'm waiting for that uh, feedback, uh, what I was saying was um, it really got me to go out almost every weekend doing photography, whereas before, yeah, I was kind of slacking a little bit. And that in combination with uh, Peter Forsgaard's 52-week project, it's uh, it's really inspired me to get out and shoot again. But uh, sound is okay, but it's a bit damped. Okay, let me, let me crank it up a tiny bit. Um, oh, actually, it's maxed out, so... That is the best I'm going to get today, but I'll move the mic a little closer. All right. Thanks, Plato. Um, so like I said, David Crooks is with me today. He's, he's hiding behind my window here <laughs> and I will bring him on. But uh, let me let me push a button here. OK, David. And I'm going to swap screens. OK, you're live. Hi, how are you? Hey, hi. <laughs> Thanks, Rob, for having me today. Yeah. Um, like I said, uh, let's let's just sort of start with the photo club itself a little bit, uh, how long you've been running it, how you started it, and, um, you know, what your experience has been running a photo club and how many members you have, all that fun stuff. Sure. So, yeah, it was about seven years ago. We just had our seventh anniversary party a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> January fifteenth right. is when I actually made the crazy decision to start this club, just on a whim. And it was just they had a fifty percent off sale with with the meetup, and so I said, "What the heck? I'll try it out and see if who shows up." <clears throat> this thing was—I mm -hmm. knew there's places around the around the area to go out and take photographs at. I was out in Luckett's and Leesburg. We used to go out in photo club out there, and. So my wife and I moved from that long commute to D.C. So we moved to Annandale to be closer to work. And like I said, I knew there was places around here to take photographs at. And so I decided to start the, start the meetup. Mm -hmm. I never expected it to be gone this long. And it's 2,400 members. And it's just been <clears throat> kind of crazy. So, yeah, I decided to do the do a guidebook with that. Mm -hmm. and, like, so I was trying to go at least two or three times a month to do field trips. We do that. And yeah. Do... I, I... Go ahead. Yeah, go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So one of the other features of my meetup is we, we started the year with doing a photo of the day. You know, that's kind mm -hmm. of a common project. And right. so I started doing that. And people like that to do it. But I noticed that they never really lasted that long. They would last you know, a couple months, two, three months, and there'd be no one posting to that, doing mm -hmm. the photo a day anymore. So I broke it down to just do by a month. So a photo a day for a month, for January, February, whatever month it is. So, and, and, and that's been pretty successful. So in January, I start out two, I do a January um, photo a day, and then also do the 365 or 366 right. leap year. And so that's and that's virtual. So anybody can join that group if you're ever getting inspired to just go out and take pictures every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh challenge. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of photos there from people that I don't normally see actually on the weekends, you know, for the group photo walks. Right. Yeah. Um, some are you know, don't get up at six. So the other thing yeah. with up groups is I usually get up at seven AM or be at the parks at 7 a.m. Right. And so 
you know, of course, that's when the best light is, you know, to get the morning light. Right. You know, and right. Versus middle of day or and sunsets, I've found them kind of hard to schedule. You know, they can kind of tough to schedule. So I found that just 7 a.m. meet on field trips mm -hmm. is the best way to, to do majority of them. I mean, I try to vary. Right. So not everybody, I know people don't like, especially on the weekend, don't like to get up real early in the morning. Yeah, that, that was the hardest thing for me was adjusting my sleep schedule. Right. <laughs> so I could be there by 7 because a lot of the stuff is about an hour from me that you that you arrange. Right. So I have to get up by 5 a.m. to leave my house before 6 to get there by 7. Yeah, yeah. It's good now. When I'm on schedule, I get there fairly on time usually. Yeah, that's good. Um, and, you know, it's a lot of work to run a club. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's... <laughs> It's a lot of work keeping up with, uh, you know, everyone that's going, thinking about assignments, thinking about places to go. Right. Uh, and, and over that time, you know, you introduced me to a lot of places I've never been to before that were just 30 minutes from my house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I encourage everyone, if you if you can have a photo club or anything in your area, uh, join one. And if you're having trouble finding one, I know at least here in the U.S., the meetup.com is mm -hmm. a great way to find local photography clubs. Uh, yeah. But with that, mm -hmm. yeah. With that said, um, and I, I forgot to put a link in the description for that, but I'll put a link to the the meetup group uh, that, that uh, David's running. So if you're local to us or in the area, you can always join us for a photo walk. I'm there pretty much every weekend. Yeah. Uh, but with that said, um, <clears throat> you know, you you know a lot of places to go to. And, and during the uh, last couple of years with the uh, lockdowns and things, right. you took the opportunity to write a book. Yeah. Uh, a field guide, basically, right? For yeah, it is a field guide book. To go. So yes. and let me uh, let me just put a screenshot. And there's links for the book down below in the description. Uh, if you'd like to order one or just look through it on Amazon. Let me go ahead and uh, show a cover of the book and tell tell us about this book, uh, why you started it, or how how you know about the process of making the book and maybe some of the places that uh, you you um, you've been or or enjoy and 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 if you can share maybe a few photos from the locations, but I'll sure. let you take over from here. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so I did have this idea a couple a few years ago. I mentioned a couple of times during the anniversary party that I was going. to Think about writing a book, a guidebook. To you know, some people had trouble finding where these places are, and so to me, it's like Google it. But so I, as Rob is showing there, there's like an info to know on the left side of all the places. I, at one point, I had like 30 places I was going to do, and it's like 30 was like too many, and I only been there like once or twice. So yeah, so what I like here is the information they talk about. Uh... You talk about if there's any fees, right. um, which there are, if there's dogs allowed, if they have bathrooms. Yep, it's and important. And the barcode, I guess you scan to get directions, and it'll take you right. right to the parking lot. Yes. Uh, and then the individual websites that might be related to that. Yep. And then the types of photography. Just right here on the one page, just sort of the skinny on the location. Right. And then uh, just maybe your stories here as well as um, – yeah, so I have an author's note of just mm -hmm. my experience with the park and then description of the park and then th things that the group has done at that park as well. So, Right, so, right. So I'm sorry, I, I didn't from, want to interrupt. I just wanted right. to elaborate a little bit in visual. Yep. Yeah, so it's – I did it through Amazon um, Publishing, Kindle Publishing, and so they do – a paperback, which was $14.99, probably $15, but they raised the price to $15.99. And I've been trying to keep it kind of as a live update also. And I do keep some track of all the up changes and updates that happened because of the pandemic or whatever reason, changes at the park. So that's within the, the website for the book. There's a document for that. And so it's, and then they have a Kindle version that you can download to your any device, really, even your Android or PC, and you can. There, there are Kindle readers that you can read the book that way. Right, and that's something you can put on your phone, right, and have exactly. with you at yes. all times. 
And on the Kindle version, it has, actually has the links. And you can get the, get the barcode there as well, the QR code. But it also has the actual links that you can press with your finger, click on. It'll take you to the Google Maps to get you. Oh, really? It. Right from the, the app? Correct. Oh, the, oh yes. okay. That's cool. And I have given that away a couple of times. The, the ebook for the mm -hmm. Amazon gets opportunity to mark kind of marketing the book. And so, yeah, it was, I mean, it doesn't really cost anything to do. It's just the work to learn how the process. I'm just doing, use, write the book in, using Google Docs. And then I save it as a Word document or a PDF file and then publish it through Kindle Publishing. And mm -hmm. it was about that easy. I mean, yeah. So how many how many uh, pictures did you go through to to uh, <laughs> I can just imagine? Yeah, there are seventy five. There's three photographs for each location. So that's seventy five. And there's a few others mm -hmm. sprinkled in as well. So yeah, it took me about a month just to go through the photographs. You know, and I did did reprocess a lot of the old ones. It's like that one photo there with a the marina. I didn't remember taking that photo so long. Oh the, yeah yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a cool shot. To, that yeah, did you um, for River Bend is nice too. I don't remember taking. It's like they're just buried in my <laughs> archives. And you so, do a little uh, calling in your uh, exactly. Lightroom there. <laughs> yeah, I got too many photographs, but it was, um, so, yeah, so showing there is the Huntley Meadows. That's my favorite place to go, as as you know. Yes, like, if I could go there every day, I would go to Huntley Meadows. That's I mean. There's always new wildlife, and I do try to show that you know you can also do landscapes as well. It's not just wildlife and birds, right? Not everyone's right. a birder, but it's a great place for birds. And and lately they've had otters and bald eagles and all sorts of you know, grateful herons. I saw my ice skating on the on the ice a couple of days ago. Wow. Um, well, I've yeah, never so, seen people ice skating there, but no, it wasn't yeah. people, it was the grateful herons. Oh, oh, the herons. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say around on the ice. Yeah. But that place is pretty reliable for uh photography. Yeah. Because you can go there and if you don't see any birds, you can do landscapes. And sure. if you don't have any uh, you know, if the, if it's cloudy out and you don't want to do landscape sunset things, you can go into the woods and do woodland. Right. Uh yeah, so there's just, woods. So all, all kinds of outdoor type photography. And I have at least three or four vlogs that I've done at this location. Right. The most recent one being the one with the um, with all the snow. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was using my Pen F and that 23 millimeter lens. Um, yeah. And how, how long did it take you to finish this book? Like so I got done in September. Yeah, it was Probably a good year or so. And my and my wife is the editor too. I got a call from my wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> we went through and read it. You know, she's a better writer than I am. She's a lawyer, so yeah. She, she made sure it was tight and clear, and so yeah, she helped out a lot with making sure. And I was getting kind of anxious. I want to get this done and get it done. It's like, well, <laughs> you can't just do a book overnight. You know, it's it's got to be. You know, got to go through different drafts, and we did go through a three, four drafts, even printed versions, which I had to pay for. And, but I wanted to make sure it looks right and everything. So, right, right. So, um, you have a page here, dedication to her, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. And I, I just noticed people were talking about where, what is the Virginia Beltway? Mm -hmm. And uh, Marsha gave a good description. It's a sixty-six mile highway. Right, uh, been all the way around it, and I used to commute, <laughs> believe it or not. All the yeah. way, around. I lived down in Fort Washington, worked in Tyson's Corner, went to school in College Park, and went back around again. Right, so, so yeah, I know I've circled that beltway many times myself just for stuff. Right. Yeah, there's the map, uh, it's not in focus yeah. yet. There we go. There, 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 there's a simple map. Here's DC here, right? And then there's uh, he has right. markers for everywhere. Right. That you can go to. Exactly. And notice nothing on the Maryland side. I live off the map over here. Okay. <laughs> uh, yep, just off. So that's why it takes me forever to get mm -hmm. sort of out of here. Um, yep. And I don't mind, you know, because it's on the weekend. So one hour drive is is uh, actually right. not bad because most of the time it's two hours to get anywhere around this area. 
Sure. At least an hour. And so I, as, as the map shows, I have eight core locations that we go to. So I started Dyke Marsh, and that's where the photo from the cover is taken. And then we go to go to Huntley Meadows, mm -hmm. go to uh, Burke Lake, Green Spring Gardens, Meadow Gardens. And then we added, added one to Glen Echo, which we were there last Sunday. And then we're going to go to, we've been to Great Falls, both sides. We go there. And then we were there last November on the Virginia side. Now we're going to go to the Maryland side on the 20th of February. So that's uh, that's the core places that I would go to. Every, I, once I get to Great Falls, I go back down to Dyke Marsh and start all over again. But of yeah. course, in between, I go to a lot of other places as, as the weather and flowers bloom, like over in Kenworth Gardens for the lotus flowers. We go there on July 4th. And, and that's one of the, uh, the great things about going with a photo club <clears throat> when you have a good uh, manager. I don't know what to like David Crooks, when you get there, he can tell you um, what's a, what what to shoot, you know, what's kind of the signature shot for that area, mm -hmm. um, things like that. And the best times to go, he'll schedule them like he was just talking about, the best times to go there for the, the signature type shots of the area. Yeah, generally it's early in the morning, but I mean, mm -hmm. like even the Holy Meadows, even afternoons and evenings can work as well, but that's when I like to go when it's less crowded and and the best light is. So yeah, you know, definitely encourage other people to you know, explore these places on their own. And I'm not. Mm -hmm. I've, some people kind of wonder if I try to have too many people inviting. But I think it, you know I think there's enough public places. I mean, at one point, how how Meadows got really crowded because we had a spoonbill bird that was. Yeah from florida it was, it wasn't supposed to be here that was the first time we had that bird here and there was like one point like 60 or 80 people at the boardwalk so that got a little crazy but you know my book is just to give you information how to get to the parking lot i'm not going to tell you stand here you're going to get this iconic shot type thing right right i mean you, you know it's it, it's one thing like you want to get the signature shot mm -hmm. if you know if you haven't done it already but yeah, it's good to explore and, you know, you're not strict on, you know, stay with the group or anything. People can branch off and explore the area and get, you know, their own shots or take on the area. Right. Um, did you, did you, um, you didn't happen to cherry pick a few images. Uh, yeah, I can share. Some. Okay, let's do that and talk sure. about those for a little bit. And I'll take myself off. Okay, this is a photo. Okay, the good technical one. Hold on. Okay, there. Yeah, your mic. Your mic got a little muted. It might have switched mics on you when you switched screens. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. So here's the the cover shot. And is I just noticed this morning that this was taken on February seventh, twenty fifteen. So this was seven years ago this weekend. It's like we need to go back here. And see if we can yeah. get the colors. So that's what the photo on the cover. Yeah, and, and hit the uh, F key, I guess, the full screen yeah, that yeah. there you go. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And where was this one? So, yeah, so that's the Potomac River at Dyke Marsh. Dyke Marsh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah this is just my old catalog of the photos. Um, trying to think of some other places that we were going to. So one of the favorite places is the is going to Meadow Art Gardens. And this was doing some night painting because they were opening early. This is like mm -hmm. five or six o'clock in the morning. Did some light painting on the gardens, and so it's kind of cool. Yeah, 
So it is a proper place because they do open, it was like once or twice a month. They were open even before seven o'clock and you can get in and get the real sunrise shots. So let's see if there's any other shots. We go to the zoo also. I actually won an award for this shot of Mookie kissing the, the baby. So it's been it's been kind of tough going to the zoo because of it, there's it's all ticketed. You have to have tickets and so, wow, well, yeah. And that's the other thing is a lot of a lot of times you know when the parks have free admission. Normally they charge a fee. Right. So you schedule photo walks for when they have free admission to the park. Right. Which, uh, you know me, El Chipo always uh, goes for that. <laughs> yep. So this is the one shot I took at River Bend Park many years ago. And don't remember taking it, but I thought it was a really cool sky. It's like, I remember. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, what else? I mean, do try to you know just not do birds all the time. And do some of the landscapes with the ginkgo trees. We had a good time with those. Yeah, last yep. couple of years. It's at the Virginia Arboretum. Out. It's a little bit of a hike to go to, but not too bad. Yeah, it's like an extra twenty 30, minutes, thirty yeah. minutes at most, right? right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, of course, the waterfalls. And this is from the Maryland side. Right, Great Falls. Yeah, that's probably what we're going to see in about the 20. Maybe we'll get some snow. It would be nice to see some snow on the rocks. Good. So. Okay. Right. Um... Let me. Sorry, go ahead. No problem. Um, so yeah, the a lot of great, great places to go just in this area. Because I'm, I'm always complaining when I go out, you know, or in the stream. You know, there's nothing but trees and brush around here. Right. <laughs> but that's why I get excited when you set up something for the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I go there, there'll be something right that I can get other than some grass. <laughs> right uh but yeah i i um <clears throat> i think the you know you're calling all of your pictures in lightroom and things mm -hmm. like that cause right another thing you do is you sometimes you have classes um you know uh virtually right now because of you know all the things right uh and you've you've done i think you're using uh luminar neo or right. Luminar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. AI, and, and you have access to Neo. Right. Uh, and using that. And you're also, um, you know, you're also affiliated, affiliated with yeah. the Luminar. So sure. I put a link down below for his uh, Luminar Neo. But if you could share maybe some of the features that you like and why you use, use because you have Lightroom, it's like, why would you buy another thing? Like, Right. And I, a lot of people, a lot of my viewers know I use uh, Photo Lab. Right. But you're sort of yeah. a, uh, a Lightroom and Luminar guy. Exactly. So you yeah. can, um, you know, if you can share with us some some of the things you like about Luminar, some of the editing features, and uh, maybe a demo of the upcoming Neo because that's not quite released yet, but you can get early access. Correct. Uh, but I, I thought some of the features are pretty impressive. So um, yep. I thought it might be kind of fun to share it with everyone. Yep, I can do that. Okay. So let me pull that up. There you go. So this is, our, there is a catalog with Luminar Neo. So this is the early access version. And so they have the three different, three tools that they're adding right now. And they're going to, Supposed to be up to like 30, 30 tools that they're adding finally. So, and the big question is when it's going to be on the street when they, and it's going to be be, be released in, in the February. So that's what they say now. Hopefully, it doesn't get dragged down any more, longer than that. But I think the project is 
You know, I think they're, they're going to they're gonna put it out there and then they're going to probably do some free updates. And they were pretty good with that with, with AI. They, ne they never charged for any updates at all. It was always free updates that they would just come out with. And so one of the features, this is actually Rob's photo. They took back with his Nikon. Oh, yeah, <laughs> my yeah. Nikon days. <laughs> yeah. So the reason Rob submitted this to me was because it has dust spots in it. So one of the features is I can go to the erase tool and just push a button, remove dust spots. I think he said I had like 20 dust spots in it or something. And it was Could be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, so, and, you know, the D750, that their low-end full-frame cameras were kind of known for uh, getting dust on the sensor. And, of course, because I'm using all this memory, I thought I had, I do have 32 gigs on this new machine. There we go. Let's try it again. Actually, let's try removing dust spots again. Yeah, and it looks like there's a... Maybe a few members here from the club in the stream. If you are, just shout out. So I'm a member <laughs> in the chat. I'm curious how many people are here. Uh, I'm having technical difficulties, of course. Demo hell. It's okay. It wouldn't be a Rob Trek stream if we didn't have technical difficulties. <laughs> Trust me. Well, it's the beta. <laughs> Copy. I, I probably should have rebooted just to be sure. Not sure. Yeah, that's that's one thing I do is I always reboot. <laughs> yeah, I'm just clearing out the memory. Stream. And then for some reason the settings don't save from. <laughs> right. When I reboot, but a lot of moving pieces in a stream, right? Yeah. I see David Tellitz here. Hey, Dave. <laughs> oh, Rick is asking about the, uh, oh, we lost David. He, <laughs> I guess, David, if you're watching now, you can come back in once you get your machine rebooted. But uh, we have something called the Ray Caverns that I'm familiar with. And... I haven't been there since I was a little kid, but it's only about two hours away. And, oh, Donna's here. Hey, Donna. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I don't, but I don't, so I don't have any photos to show you. But, yeah, there is a pretty amazing uh, cavern system called Luray Caverns. And um, I just haven't been there. It's a couple hours away, and then they, they charge admissions. And, you know, I'm so cheap that... Uh, that's been pretty low priority for me when there's so many other things to photograph. But uh, Luray itself, that it's a, there's a town called Luray, is quite beautiful uh, from a photographic standpoint. It's lots of lots of open farmland and uh, things like that. This could be David. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's saying he's rebooting, which I assumed was the case. And I've taken some pretty... I got a really great picture from one of my drives there. I seriously doubt I'm going to find it, though. <laughs> Let me see. Rob Trek. House. No, no way I'm going to find it. Yeah, it's not, <clears throat> it's not in here. I'm just, um, Nope. Nope. I was just going through my uh, houses here. But it was something like this. I mean, it's kind of a cop out. Uh, 
This is from one of my drive by drive by things. But okay, David David made it back in. So let me let me go back in. Oh, I lost him. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, Photo clubs are definitely a good way to get out. All right, he's back. <laughs> okay, I had to stall for you. Oh, no problem. Yeah, sorry about that. It's okay. I'll wait for you to pull up your screen. Yeah, let me do that again. How do you spell Larray? We were talking about Larray Caverns. Mm -hmm. It's a fun place to visit. Haven't... There we go. So you're going to show us the... Uh, some of the features, I guess one is the dust spots, what you're starting with. There's also power line removal, and then there's maybe relighting. But, okay, take it away. <laughs> yeah. So I, under the erase tool, it's got the remove power lines. And hopefully it won't. I had to reboot. It, it just crashed the, the live stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's okay. Was... I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. If it if it's if it's a fresh reboot, it might take a minute. Everything's going to be slow for a few minutes. Right. You know. It reminds me of that show, uh, the IT Crowd. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, have you that tried turning good. it off and on again? <laughs> yeah, it usually helps. <laughs> when all fails, reboot. That's what I had yep. to do. I have to say, though, I, I don't have to reboot anywhere near as often as I did when I was using, like, Windows 98. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was constantly every, you know, every hour I was rebooting, felt like. Okay, so day. finally did finish. And I can close the race tool and I can zoom in. This is, I probably should have zoomed in before the dust spots, but this is where a lot of them were on the screen. And the okay. image. Yeah, so, that's clean. I mean, it it does a good job. Go over to um, you have another image, right? Yes. With dust spots, let's see the before. Uh, punch in. Uh, yeah, this one. Is that mine too? Yes. Okay. I thought this one had. Yeah, there's one. Remove the spots. Yeah, but I've seen images that had like, yeah, like you were saying, 20, 30 dust spots, and then you click the button, it'll just clean them all up for you. Yep, there you go. So yeah, it does a pretty good job of fixing that. I always got to check to see if it's some mark on my monitor. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. And then the other one is the power lines. Yeah, removing power lines, right? So here's up in Conway Eagle Dam. It's on the book also with Bald Eagles. Mm -hmm. And so you just push a button. And of course, you can do it manually, but who wants to do it? <laughs> Spend the time and you can just push a button and they're gone. It, this one doesn't do a great job. You see, there's a little bit of artifacting. And it's got to go through the trees a little bit. But overall, it did a pretty good job. And then they got this image also. Okay. Yeah. That's very common, right? To get power lines like that right yeah, across the sunset, sunrise. Your sky. Beautiful sky, but this one does a really good, pretty good job on. So a couple of seconds, it didn't even take that long. So that, that's cool. And the other one is is to to relight the image. So let's go back to this image. I can relight the the foreground, the background. It's under the creative module. You can do brightness near or far. You can actually darken the 
I can darken the foreground. Kind of get some more detail in the foreground there. And then I can brighten up the Lincoln Memorial just by with a right. slider. And, and so, this is a more sophisticated way of doing it other than, you know, because most of it would just say, oh, this is just highlight shadow. But the the AI is actually, you know, doing its best to map the distances between different objects in the scene and right. light them uh, based on their position, their three-dimensional position uh, in the photo. Yeah, that's correct. So it is doing a 3D map of, as Rob said, and, and it can also warm it warm it up and if there's any dehaling halos you can do that so it's kind of cool and i you know i haven't done much of the skies with this version but mostly i'd use my own skies i can push a button you can do that just like you do in photoshop and other programs now so and does puts the clouds in 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 the water as well to get that re reflection. So oh wow! Cool. Yeah, that is cool. So they can do it before and after. <laughs> so then, so I think the AI stuff. I mean, it's there to help you. Isn't that doesn't you don't have to take everything as you know, that's the only way it's going to be. You know, it's just tools to help. Right, right. You know. um, yeah, that's that's a huge difference. And and the sky replacement, was, that was done in the software. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plato says he calls these uh, Simpson clouds. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> Do, do they have a different variety of clouds, like maybe a sunset or? Yeah, they there are. Let's see. Here are sunset clouds. So yeah, we can make it nighttime. <laughs> yeah, that that makes that looks a lot better. The way the shadows were on my on the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. Cool. that is cool. I mean, I was I was tempted. I mean, I'm still thinking about it. Uh, I was trying to get a last discount. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> until when they release it, it's going to be full price. But exactly, which I think uh, is around 100 bucks. Right, is my guess. So I think and it's it's 79 dollars now, and they're going to give you a couple of free uh, packs of images. I guess you can use with it. Correct. Um, you know, you guys can check it out from the link below, but. You know the 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 power line removal and the the relighting were sort of interesting to me from a from an architectural photographer standpoint doing my real estate and commercial business um because uh i'm gonna hide this was there anything else you wanted to demo there dave no i think that's it that's good. okay okay you know because time to time I will get power lines in the in the scene when I'm doing an exterior shot of a property and I could remove them using that software. I mean, sometimes I do it manually and that's a pain. So I just leave them there because I, I don't have time to deliver. You know, I have to deliver my stuff very quickly. Right. And I just don't have time to go through that. And this would this would save a lot of time. If that were something I wanted to do, I think if I did more residential property, I'd probably consider it a little more strongly uh but commercial property usually the building's pretty big and you know it's not not a, not as much an issue except in uh when i'm downtown in a city mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and then the relighting was kind of interesting too that it maps it three-dimensionally so when i'm doing office spaces or bedrooms right um sometimes the lighting's not great even when i'm using flash the ambient light is not very good in the room and this this uh relighting ability based on a 3d map uh would help me get a more natural look rather than it looking like i used a flash right right so i'm still thinking about it it's just they don't have a free demo that you can download you have to buy it at whatever discount and then you can get free access and use it to right. the early 
you know, like beta edition. Yeah. Uh, so that, for, you know, and you know how cheap I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'd have to really know that I'd use it a lot before I spend whatever it is. I don't care if it's $20, you know, you think it'd be a no brainer, but El Cheapo guy like me, I'd still be like, <laughs> but anyhow, okay, that's cool. Um, yeah. It's a cool software. Definitely. If it's something you guys think you can use um, and there's, there's lots of reviews online on the early access version that mm -hmm. you can check out as well. But um yeah, and as you said, I did do a couple, um, did did some online editing for my group, and I got those recorded, and they're on YouTube. I think one of them got like nine hundred views on it. Right, right. So David does have a YouTube channel as well, which I have a link down below. Yeah, and actually, uh, tell me about a couple of the videos you have on that channel. Like, I, I know you have one with the photos from the book, right? Right, yes. The 75 photos is a slideshow for that. It's about 15 minutes mm -hmm. of the photos in the book. Yeah, so, and it gives you all the exit data for that as well. So, oh, okay. So, yeah, definitely there's, there's a video showing all the photos in the book that you published right. with the exit data, right? Be kind yeah. of interesting. And there's, some, you know, there's beautiful photos Thank in there. Thank you. Thank you. And then you have a couple of, um, at least one video, maybe two, demonstrating the Luminar Neo. Right. Um, you know, we just did a, just a couple of photos here, but you go a little more in depth and show, because exactly. uh, <clears throat> those, were, those were live Zoom classes, I think you did for the yes. group. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. That's cool. Um, let me see. Any questions at all? Yeah. Let me check the chat section. Let's let's open up the Q and A for uh for um David. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I forgot your name for two seconds. <laughs> uh anybody has any questions for David yeah. about you know maybe the photo club, maybe about writing publishing a book or about any of the location yeah. in the book? Yeah, I saw, saw Rick's comment. I guess he's leaving. Oh, he okay, Rick. AI stuff. When he just replaced with the best image on the internet, it's like, that's not my work. <laughs> I want I want to fix up my work. You know, yeah, my I think art. it's this one. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's my artwork. I mean, the AI is a tool. It's That's the way I see it. It's like, you know. Yeah. It, it, yeah, I mean, I use sky perfect. replacement that Photoshop has time to time for my commercial work. Yeah, and it, you know, and that's just for nobody really cares what. I mean, they just don't want to see a blank sky. It's just more interesting when it's clouds or something in the sky. Right. And so here, here's the question: work, I want to use my sky, and so it's you know completely my work. Right. You took the picture of the sky, and you can right. use that instead of what comes with Luminar. Yep. And right. They actually had the discussion at the camera club. They have competitions. So because of that, you actually because they have time frames and when you take the take your photo that you enter for competition, you have to give what date it was taken. But then you also have to say what date you took the sky with. And if you if you, if you change the sky out, you have to be within the within the same time frame. Right, right. Because you know the shadows and the clouds have to match the shadows on the ground, right? Right. Yeah. So you know, but um, I used to, I used to try to take pictures of skies independent, thinking with that mindset, right? That I want to have all different variety of kinds of skies to put in my image, right? Uh, so that things look natural, right, and cohesive. But yeah, um, that's good to have them different times of you the know, day. They they don't pay me enough for that, no. <laughs> you know, for my commercial work. <laughs> right. You know, for my personal stuff, I don't worry about it as much, but it, it's kind of fun to play a little bit sometimes. Sure. So John, John, you'd say has a question because we mentioned, I think earlier on, we have about 2,400 members online. Right. You know, we know like a thousand of those are just fake Russian accounts. Right? Probably. <laughs> no offense to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, how, how many people actually come on a typical photo walk? So I get about 15, 20. I've been waiting for the time mm -hmm. when I do get like a thousand people show up. But yeah, it's not that many, really. And Wait a minute. Did you just say you got a thousand people one time? No, no, no. I'm waiting for that oh. time. Oh, okay. That but yeah, no. It, I have heard that 
on the Scott Kelly Worldwide Photo Walk that there was one in like Singapore or something over in Asia, mm -hmm. and they had like a thousand people show up on a photo walk <laughs> on that one day. Oh wow! Wow. But, yeah, no, I, I usually yeah, it's, it was like twenty five people or less sometimes, and yeah. Yeah, I've seen I've seen larger groups and you know smaller groups. It's really weather dependent, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, How early it is? Yeah, yeah, they're all early. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say ninety nine percent. You know, sure. yeah. So the winter time's a little better because sun isn't come up till seven thirty, but still, right. yeah, dude, reschedule those. <laughs> you know, you you've had these like six a.m. meetings too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when um, metal art gardens that open up at seven six right right <laughs> so, that's pretty brutal. i don't think yeah, i've yeah. made one of those yet uh there's another question here any tips getting mm -hmm. local photogs motivated for a photo walk um i just get out there and take pictures um and just join the group or and you have to you know, get motivated to get up in the morning know that you're going to go out and take some pictures and meet some people and one thing that i also didn't mention was that we usually try to go out for breakfast afterwards sometimes the social we do it's not really mm -hmm. a planned social event but it would do do a go to a local restaurant and have breakfast and coffee and yeah you need that in the morning to right warm up there's, and, there's some members that actually just come for that <laughs> exactly <laughs> it has happened so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think the best motivation is just leading by example, you know, when you mm -hmm. show up and you have the right. images, things yeah. like that. Um, right. And, you know, uh, keeping in touch, right? You have a lot of phone numbers <clears throat> and vice versa. They have your number mm -hmm. to contact you directly. Right. Um, and, and just keeping up with people, that personal touch, right? Yeah. I mean, I've, I made so many friends with this group that... You know, never would have met otherwise. And even on the on the Zoom calls, people would we had one gentleman from Canada joined us in the Zoom call. He guess found my group through the meetup and saw that I had a Zoom call and he was just you know locked it, locked down in his house in Canada. So he joined us and asked mm -hmm. some questions and we chatted and learned about him and it was it's it cool. I um it's another question here about having a site. And actually, the the pictures are. I'll post the link. I'm gonna try. So the site is the Met Meetup Group site. So each field yeah, trip so there's, has an album. <clears throat> there's the link to the the Meetup Group. So you can join the group while you're there. But if you just want to look at the photos because you're somewhere else, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and it has the name of the member that posted the image. Yeah, so, so there, like I said, there are albums on the Meetup group for each field trip, and you can go through those, right. and you post your right. pictures. I try to <clears throat> limit people to pull that five up or ten. Quick. Yeah, I have people just um, move five or ten pictures from each field trip. I've had some newbies, you know, come on in and try to do fifty photographs or something for. <laughs> so. Right. <clears throat> so there's a. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. So there's all the albums for, the, for, the, for their field trips and right. you can open that up and you can scroll through. So everybody. So, like this one, you can see I posted this one. Right. Uh, but there's ones from other members. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's, there's a lot of good work here. A lot of good photographers come to the group. Yeah. Uh, so, it's a great way to meet people, you know, that, with, that are like minded, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see, Marco has a question. Yeah. Like, are um, walks structured in a way that members are guides to capture particular subjects, or just group exploring a particular area? So, so most part, it was to just explore the area, but I have added challenges. If I remember, I tried to do it in advance. I have a particular challenge, like rule of thirds or abstract or something, you know, not just 
walk around just trying to find something interesting, have a, more of a challenge. And then a, at the end of the field trip, I, I go through the photos and I find that pictures that meet that challenge. And I pick the best one and put that on the on the web page on the meetup site. So yeah, a lot of people like that. A lot of people come want to know what the challenge is. <laughs> oh so, my God. And Rob, I know, and you pick like I always complain about his challenges because we'll go to like a beautiful waterfall and then the challenge will be something like, you know, yellow. Orange. Orange. It was orange. It was October. <laughs> I was like, seriously, we got waterfalls here and you're gonna make the challenge orange. <laughs> <laughs> like let's go out to the mountains and take beautiful landscapes what's the challenge you know yeah oh we're gonna do uh reflections mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh my god <laughs> yeah that's got to be a challenge otherwise it's too easy so right right yeah can't be too easy um but yeah, the, the the walks, the photo walks are always a lot of fun, and um, yeah. you know the challenges do add an interesting element sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, because like I said, you'll go someplace where there's waterfalls or you know mountains and stuff, and then the challenge will be something like just like totally off the wall sometimes. But people manage somehow to get some good shots. Right. That. that you know, are in line with that challenge. I don't think I've ever won a challenge. Oh yeah, you have. In fact, I think <laughs> you got the orange one. I think you found some orange leaves. Oh, that's right. I did do the. <laughs> I did win the orange one. <laughs> so yeah, it oh, happened. Oh my god, he, he wins. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, and I won. I won the one at the party too, right? The seventh annual. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. Yep. That's cool because for the party, make sure if it's in physical, only make sure that people do prints. You know, because people yeah. don't print photos graph enough, in my opinion. Yeah, it's definitely important, important that people don't print enough at all, or if if at all, <laughs> everything's right. like on and on your computers, and you don't see the prints. And I think that's an important part of. And it's good backup also. <laughs> I've heard someone talk about you know your your actual. If anything happens with your media, but you have a print, you can, you know. Yeah, prints are forever, happy. right? Exactly. I print, I print a lot of stuff. Yep. yep. That's cool. You know, I got this whole whole thing of all my prints. Right. Uh, I mean, I like it. Yeah. I, honestly, if you if you haven't printed your photos, you know, what are you waiting for? You should right. print. Yeah. It's, it's the I even use my little. Um, You know, I use my my little uh, cheap printer. It prints mm -hmm. these little credit card size images. Oh, that's cool. You know, for nice. just for fun, right? Sure. Uh, it it doesn't hurt. Yeah, but, see, I, see, the Randy has kind of comments about how he shoots alone, and that is kind of one of the things. I mean, even though we meet at the beginning somewhat, and then and people, some stragglers show up, but Harvey is kind of like a solo thing, so people do kind of branch off and go their own, you know, whatever the direction they feel like. Yeah, the pictures at. So it is kind of solo that way, and then we meet up again at the end and go to the social part of it. But right. doing this, photography is kind of like a can be a really social event, and not going to, you know. Yeah, I I know that kind of whole group. I, I did a video once, and in the video I asked, uh, in a vlog, mm -hmm. I asked people, you know, do you guys shoot alone? And I got so many comments. Yeah, everybody shoots alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah and that's generally how we work. Yeah, but you know, the the the, the photo clubs are probably 80, 90% about the photography. Well, I would say 50-50, actually. It's about 50% about the photography, 50% the social side, meeting new people. Sure. And, uh, you know, like-minded people, right? And the social thing afterwards. Yeah. Um, and, you you know, you make a lot of new friends. I've certainly made a lot of new friends. Mm -hmm. um, two of them are here in the stream that I see, Donna and uh, David. Right. Right, David Tellett. I think David um, Tellett was already on your stream. But, yeah, but he's shown it physically since he's local. Yeah. Yeah, I see that Marco's got a similar question about how did we meet? 
Actually, I switched to Olympus just before the pandemic. And mostly because um, I was getting tired of carrying my big Canon. I had a Canon 70 Mark II with a big 50 to 500 on a tripod and doing wildlife photos with that. And a lot of some of the pictures in the book are from that using that camera. Mm. But when I switched to Olympus, I started getting on YouTube, and that's when I found Rob, Rob on, on his channel. And I saw that he was doing some stuff in Alexandria, so I didn't know, know exactly where he, where he was in the area, but I figured he had to be somewhat local if he was doing Alexandria street photography type things. And so that's how I found Rob and connected from there. Yeah, I think I think you came into one of my live streams and yeah. and said, you know, uh, I have a photo club or something, and why don't right. you uh, come? Yep, yep. So we exchanged. Uh, <clears throat> I gave him my email. I guess your email was the first way you contacted me. Right. And then from there, the rest is history, right? <laughs> yeah, I got you out of your house. <laughs> oh, my just... God, that's so true. I, I mean, I, seriously, I, I, this is all right after the pandemic just hit in, in yeah. March. I think it was like July. And with my group, I still kept going when I could. When they opened up the parks, I, I went right back to the parks. And so and I think the sunflowers, right? We went to photograph the sunflowers. Yeah, yeah we did That's sunflowers. That was our first photo shoot together, right. just about a year and a half ago, right? Yeah, yeah, it was in July. Uh, yeah, so exactly a year and a half, basically. Right. So that's how long we've known each other mm -hmm. uh, personally. Right. I guess you've known me through my yeah. channel before that, right? Yeah, I didn't. That's how I found out about uh, you with my Olympus. I probably wouldn't have found out if you hadn't, hadn't that switched to Olympus. But yeah, it's been, I'm using the, my camera now as the as my webcam. And I really love my Mark III. And, yeah. And, uh, everyone he has, has it everywhere. And it's so interesting. There's a lot of Olympus shooters in the photo club, too. Yeah, I know. It was amazing at the last, at, over, when we had the last meeting on Sunday up at Glen Echo. Boy, we had like five or six people with the Olympus. Yeah. It was only a couple yeah, of people. A ton. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing. We were, it was nice to be able to share lenses and I got to try out an eight millimeter while I was there. And, right. You know, right. Jerry, Jerry, uh, yeah. Anna. Yeah. Um, I got some new people there too. Yeah, I remember we went to Great Falls one time, mm -hmm. and there was it seemed like everybody had Olympus, and they were shocked to see that we were all using Olympus because <laughs> yeah. it was like their first time in the group, and they're like, "Wow, you guys all shoot Olympus too!" <laughs> it was kind of kind of yeah. funny, um, but yeah, definitely Olympus is. Uh, I mean, Olympus is alive and well in the photo club, in our photo club, anyway. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people switched to, from Canon to Olympus while I was there. Yeah. Just in, in the past year, right? Yeah. In fact, Marco's got that question. Is it become all the shooters because of you guys or just happen? Most of them just happened that way. But there are a couple couple ladies that were had big, I don't know, bigger. Yeah. Lenses, they asked, you know, camera mm -hmm. cameras. And yeah, they were talking to us about our cameras and they did switch. Yeah, definitely. They they were thinking about Olympus, and then of course they see me and Dave and a few other members using yep. Olympus. So, yep. and the idea being, yeah, they wanted smaller, lighter gear. They were tired of carrying, you know, their huge uh, lenses mainly. Right. Um, and the fact that we could offer, you know, a little bit of support on the technical side of the camera, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and I and I've always said that about Olympus. And they're doing a better job now, but they do um, support the cameras after you buy them, at least through virtually on YouTube, because they're putting out a lot of content that way. Right. Mostly UK, um, I've seen Olympus UK does a lot of mm -hmm. more US. That's one of my complaints. US doesn't seem like they do enough, I think, but that's at least the UK does. Right, right. And you know, it's close enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's virtual anyway, right? Yeah. Uh, and then there's then there's the the you know we have a good community on YouTube for uh, Micro Four Thirds. You know, Olympus yeah. in particular is very strong uh, right. with Peter and Jimmy and uh, Robin. Yeah. 
Um, cool. Plato says, I've met my fair share of amateurs, but only sh two shot Olympus. Really? When I was at the trade show, mm -hmm. uh, I went to the uh, P... Oh God, I can't even remember what it's called. Imaging USA. Right, it was Imaging USA. Trade it's, show. About PPA, so those are professionals. Those are people who make, you know, the yeah. way portrait people. Right, but actually when I was, you know, I didn't, you know, Olympus, OM, OM Systems was not there no. on the floor for where all the vendors are. And they don't, I don't think they'll ever be at a trade show again. You know, like a lot of the vendors, manufacturers, you're not going to see them as much, if, if at all, in the future. Right. But um, the people that attended, you know, like me, when I was sitting in the front row of one of the classes, uh, you know, there was a couple of people there with Olympus cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, we were, it was for one of the, it was the, uh, it was for a portrait class. Okay. Where they were talking about people with different skin tones and how to, how to shoot oh, yeah. people with different skin tones. Right. And in the front row, there was uh, Olympus people. Yeah. Uh, at least two that I saw. Right. Um, so, I, you know, the although, to be fair, I'm looking for it, right? So I'm going to yeah. find it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. But the average person, you know, if I was looking for Nikon, I'd be like, Nikon and Canon yeah. are everywhere, right? Would be, yeah. And they are. <laughs> but it's not like Olympus didn't have a presence right it's there there was plenty there yep yeah i saw um, joe there so joe edelman yeah joe joe was there um he was uh he he had a class there that i missed oh i so wanted to take that class this joe is amazing he's an amazing right. educator right uh, so you know at least i i connect you know with him and his mm -hmm. way of teaching right it's and I, I think he appeals to a lot of people uh, with his teaching style. Mm -hmm. But I, I particularly I connect very well with how he teaches. I, I I don't know if I can emulate how he teaches in my own things. I don't think that goes with my personality. <laughs> he does have the personality. <laughs> you know, but um, uh, I totally respect what he does. And I connect very well with his teaching style. Yep. It's very different than mine. But mm -hmm. for me as a you know somebody learning photography i connect really well with his stuff um yeah. <laughs> marco says you pissed him off <laughs> you, you pissed off joe <laughs> yeah it's funny i've seen him I don't think you can piss piss off joe. joe doesn't get joe <laughs> joe doesn't get pissed off he has very short patience though right he has very little patience that's true uh very short so mm -hmm. so he'll I don't think he gets mad, but he dismisses people pretty quickly, right? Mm, I've seen like, it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. He, he's really a good guy. He has a lot of tough love, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? Right. I think he really loves everybody and photographers and cameras, but it's tough love, right? Yeah. And zero patience. <laughs> <laughs> Not zero, but very, very little. Yeah. Um, All right. Okay. Uh, for an hour or so. Yeah. I'll let you go, Dave. I don't want to keep you here all day. No problem. I'll stay on just for a little bit more to catch up with the gang. Okay. Uh, but thanks. Thanks so much for coming in today. Thank you. Uh, right. there, there's links to his, uh, the meetup group and um, the Luminar Neo and also to his book on Amazon. Uh, yep. Let me, oh, that reminds me. I got to throw, oh, I lost it. I was going to throw in one more link for your book, but. I, I can send it to you. You can add it later, whatever. Yeah, or, you know, when you get off the stream, you can type it in the chat section, right? Yeah, I think uh, I did. Okay. Yeah, early on. Early on in the stream, there's a, there's a link, but, but put a little it. description before the link so people know what they're clicking on. <laughs> sure, makes sense. Uh, it is a shortened link. So, okay. Right, right. okay. All right, thanks, okay. Dave. We'll, uh, we'll see you again soon this weekend, yeah. probably. <laughs> that was good. Take care. All right, bye-bye. Okay.
I think that's it. So thanks again, Dave, for joining me today. If you're still watching, uh, go ahead and put a comment uh, in the chat section with a link to uh, your, because you have a specific website for your book, I think. Uh, and I did share a link to the meetup group where all the photos are. So just to go back to Larray Caverns very short, briefly, um, let me see if I can. This is, uh, <clears throat> we were talking about Larray Caverns earlier. This is Larray Caverns. Uh, I just Googled it because I've never, I, I, I don't have any of my own pictures, right? Oh, but it, it's kind of a cool place. I should go back there, but I think admissions is kind of high. Let me see. Where's, yeah, $32. Seniors, 29. Maybe I can get away with that. <laughs> I wonder what they count as senior. But still, that's only three bucks. It should be half, right? <laughs> um. Where's my full screen? Oh, I don't have the chat window up. Let me pull that up real quick. I've. Bear with me while I adjust to to single single user. Where did the chat window go? No, oh, that's not working, is it? Should be it. I don't know why that's not working. Let me try one more time. Nope, I got nothing. I don't know why. Well, no matter. I'll just use full screen. Uh, I normally like to have the chat window scrolling during the stream so that uh, I can watch it later. But uh, what was the other thing? I wanted to, oh yeah, the other thing was the picture I took of that house. I did find it. I will show you that. Because I, I haven't gone to Luray Caverns, but I've drove around Luray. And uh, yeah, it was this this is the house I took a picture of. Uh, it was, you know, so it's a lot of landscape and stuff around there, right? This is this is one of the houses I took. And then um, I think this was a, a landscape uh, that I took along the way so this this barn here is actually right next to the picture of that house that i took this so this all this property here belongs to that abandoned house <laughs> so i have to assume that somebody uh you know somebody owns all of that and they're living somewhere but they're not living in that house which is kind of weird uh and let's see if there's anything else interesting. These were just drive-by shots. 
Um, let me click on JPEG. Lots of pictures of Ellie while I was going in the car. Anyway, I don't want to bore you guys with these these photos too much. You know, cows, <laughs> blurry shot of cows as I was driving by. All right, go back to screen, get my chat window back in order. There we go. And Ralph says, um, Ray Cavers is cool. I went on my own and forgot my flash, so it was making adjustments manually through the whole trek. It was fine. Help me with making in my yes. Yeah, I guess I should maybe bring. I don't know if they let you use flash inside, but if they do, that would help me a little bit because I'm good with flash. I should do more videos on flash, right? I did one. I think. Didn't I do one? Oh, I did that portrait, low-key portrait with Flash. I want to do more things like that. And this looks like a question. What is a good what is a good Ollie camera that's good for tubing and photo walks, etc.? I don't want the M1 Mark III for that. Uh, looking for something lightweight. Uh, the best camera that Olympus has for that is the EM5 Mark III. Um, <clears throat> because it's it's much smaller, much lighter, and it has a mic jack, and it does great video, and autofocus is very good because it has the phase detect. So EM5 Mark III is the best one. You could go down to the EM5 Mark II uh, for about half that price. You know, you can find them used. It also has a mic jack and uh, good video, 1080p video, no 4K. Uh, the only challenge is, is that it uses contrast detect, which is not bad for video. But if you're very sensitive to pulsing and things like that, if you're going to rely on autofocus, the M5 Mark III is a better choice. If you're only going to rely on autofocus a little bit, but manually focus things most of the time, EM5 Mark II, you can save a lot of money, and it does excellent 1080p. Uh, but if you need 4K and you need good autofocus, and the mic jack, the EM5 Mark III is your best bet. And a good lens to use uh, with it is the actually the Panasonic 12 to 32. It's a nice little pancake lens. I was just using it yesterday. Where did I put it? Ah. I don't know. I was I was just gonna show it to you, but uh, I don't know where I set it down now. Uh, but yeah, that that would be my advice. Is is that setup, and that's gonna give you better autofocus than any of the Panasonics. Uh, if you get the M5 Mark III, um, I can't think of any other camera that would have. All of those features wrapped up into one for vlogging. Now, for me personally, I stopped using the, I bought the M5 Mark III to use it exactly for that. Uh, and if you watch Camera Conspiracies guy, Casey, he he would recommend the M5 Mark III plus the 12 millimeter F2 lens. But that's a really expensive setup, right? Because you're talking thousand bucks for the camera, another 500 to 700 bucks for the lens. Uh, you know, the EM5 Mark III with a 12 to 32, you can get the 12 to 32 kit lens from Panasonic for like, I don't know, less than 200, I think. Probably 100. I paid 130 for mine, but prices have gone up since then. But I paid 130 for mine. And I like it because it's nice and wide. And if you're going to go, but if you're going to go into low light, you're going to have to get the 12 millimeter F2 lens. Um, that's going to be, you know, an F2 versus the kit lens is an F3.5. Uh, let's see. Another good option. But yeah, what I was going to say is me personally, I use the just a little action cam. And it shows the quality of the video is not that great for vlogging. Uh, if you're talking about doing vlogs for YouTubes where you're out in the field, 
it's not that great. If you're talking about doing videos for YouTube, like I'm doing now in my office here, <clears throat> uh, then EM5 Mark II or EM1 Mark II. Those, those are really good options. I'm using the EM1 Mark II now because you don't have to rely on autofocus. I'm using autofocus now, but you don't have to rely on it. You can just set the, the AF. So ho hopefully that answers your question. Okay. Uh, and Roth says they do allow flash at Laray. Awesome. EM5 Mark III. Yep. And then Marco has a comment. Minor issue with the M5 Mark III versus the M1 Mark III for YouTube. The M5 Mark III can only output 1080p when in video capture mode. So no capturing 4K with the HDMI output. Oh, I didn't know that. The M5 Mark III doesn't output 4K video through the HDMI. I mean, I don't have any 4K HDMI. You, you'd have to buy an HDMI switcher and... I mean, it really ramps up your costs, right? If you have to upgrade everything from the camera to your computer. Uh, and then you have to have high bandwidth, right, on your internet service to be able to transmit in 4K over YouTube. So it, it's a lot of, lot of things in action in play there, right? A lot of, a lot of pieces if you want to do 4K. It's quite a bit of step up. Um, But I'd, I'd have to know specifically the application you're doing to maximize your cost to function, right? Cost, you know, to make it practical but not expensive. I mean, the most, the cheapest way to go would be EM5 Mark II. But that may not be a good solution if you're going to rely on a autofocus. Yeah, hey Roman. Um <clears throat> Yeah, I streamed something once at 720p and the the quality was excellent. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell that it was just 1080 or that that it wasn't 1080 or 4K. It was it was perfectly fine. And Lucifer says I thought you can't YouTube from You can. Uh, but you need a, uh, I wouldn't rely on the webcam software that Olympus has because it only outputs 720p. I would get an HDMI switcher like I'm using. I can show you. Uh, let me loosen this up a little bit. But I use this uh, switch box, right? And there's my EM5 or EM1 Mark II with uh, some stuff. Actually, I actually have another camera over here. Uh, that's my EM1 Mark III. But you see the HDMI cable coming out. And um, <clears throat> they all go into this, and then I can switch between them. So, uh, anyhow, <clears throat> see, that's camera three. And I had camera two. I was using camera two now to show you everything. And then I got camera one over there. So that's how narcissistic I am. The more cameras on me, the better. <laughs> I can't have enough cameras on me. I'll never be happy until I have the maximum number of cameras looking at me, right? Okay. Uh Let's see. Rob Trek, I thought you can't live you stream. Yeah, so I'm sorry, Elizabeth. So you can with the Well, let me not speak out my butt. I've never done it with the M5 Mark III. Live stream directly from the camera. I've always plugged in the way the way I'm showing you guys now.
And Nero says uh, he saw an improvement. <clears throat> I've heard this before. Like, if I upload videos in 4K, they may do better in the algorithm because YouTube prefers showing 4K content. But um, I think that's a very uh, minor thing in this. You know, my perspective on doing YouTube is is really... I want the content itself to be really good and it needs to stand on its own. If I can gain a few more views by shooting in 4K, that doesn't interest me, you know. I want I want people to you know, I want it to go viral on its own because of the content, not because I shot it in 4K. <clears throat> I think if I was doing more scenic type videos and stuff, you know, I would deliver 4K for a better experience. But I want my videos to kind of stand on their own. And I'm not I'm not trying to gain more views through all these little tips and tricks that that you know you hear about as a uh, as a YouTuber, so to speak. You know, because there's a lot of things, right? Have a better thumbnail, have a catchy title that's borderline clickbaity, um, yada yada, you know, and then and then uh, there's hot topics I could talk about, like you know, the Canon R3 came out. I could have done a video on that, right? Right away. But YouTube also has another, I don't know if anybody's interested in doing YouTube, but the main thing with with YouTube and Google and, and their search algorithms is you need to have, to get found, right? And to get good traction on your videos, you need to have some authority on the subject or become an authority on the subject. So I guarantee if you type in Olympus EM10 Mark II tutorial, I'll be on the first page of Google and on the first page of YouTube, right? Uh, actually, let's test that right now. So I'm just in Google. Olympus E-M10 Mark II tutorial. Look at that. I'm number one, right? Because I over time I've developed, I've I've become an authority on this camera and making tutorials for this camera. Right? And then if we go to uh YouTube, if I type in uh Olympus E dash M10 Mark II tutorial number one. Peter's number two. I'm number three. Oh, Roberto, awesome. Roberto D. Donato's there. Then Jimmy. You beat out Jimmy in the search tutorial. But you can see like half the videos on this page are all mine, right? When you search for that. And uh, let me go back to full screen. But that's what I mean about uh, you know, if you want to do well on YouTube, you have to develop a presence and an authority on a very specific topic. And uh, at least that's what I have found. You know, if I make another video on the EM10 Mark II tomorrow, I mean, it's an old camera. It'll probably do well because YouTube's going to put it right at the top of the page for anybody looking for EM10 Mark II stuff. Okay, uh, let's let me scroll up. There was um, a lot of comments, maybe. Oh, yeah, the M5 Mark III doesn't have tethering, so it's not able to uh, use the webcam software. Yeah, that's right. That rings a bell. I knew that. I just forgot. <laughs> You're using ManyCam. I'm not familiar with that. And let's see. Better footage does not bring better content. If you want to see that I watch National Geographic or David, yes. 
Yeah, but as a creator, you want to deliver the best experience you can. And that that was my point. But, you know, ultimately the content has to stand on its own, right? It has to be uh, interesting, tell a story maybe, whatever. You know, there's lots of things about creating content. And another tip for people starting out or looking to build a channel is to use a tool like TubeBuddy. Yes, it just helps with the title and description optimization of SEO. Yeah, I use TubeBuddy uh, to help me with the keywords, you know, all of the SEO type stuff, search engine optimization. That definitely does, does help a little. YouTube will tell you it has very little play, but there's been enough people that said it did make a difference, that it only takes an extra couple of minutes to do that on your video, to optimize it. So um, it doesn't hurt. And I, I try to do it most of the time. I try to use the keywords and titles, things like that, and make those line up. And John says, you are the best for these kinds of tutorials. I use them all the time. Where's your Olympus contract? <laughs> uh, no, I need to stay independent. And John says, uh, says, hi, John. John says hi to John. <laughs> Sometimes these messages scroll so fast, I have a hard time clicking on the right one. And but John John is saying I was immensely helpful. I'm I'm glad I could help. Yeah. I'm always happy to help. I've heard that too, that it's shipping in March. Yeah, I've heard that too. Um <laughs> that's right, Roberto. Roberto, I love his channel. I I I'm, I should I try to hit the like button. I watch on my TV most of the time, so I can't like type in a comment. But I do watch all your videos. Uh, I just watch the one uh, your architectural man. You did some awesome shots. The bait, the simplified architectural type photography. Those were awesome. So check out check out Roberto's uh, channel. He's he's really upped his game. And his vlogs are so much better than mine. Because, uh, you know, my vlogs, you know me, right? My vlogs, I'm kind of monotone and, and very melancholy when I go out and take pictures. But Roberto, he's hilarious. He has a very similar personality in that he's very low-key. But he has a really dry sense of humor that I don't have in my videos that he does. So his are a lot more fun to watch than mine. I know that. Um, and what's this? I got Tony and Chelsea and some German videos if I'm not logged in with my name. EM10 tutorial if I'm logged in as me as Rob. That's interesting. I am logged in. So the algorithm also right other than uh <clears throat> you know the, the the algorithm also is aware of your own personal viewing habits so if, obviously i watch a lot of my own videos so that's why my videos came up at top right so yeah so the search algorithm is a little bit biased on my end it'd be interesting to, to sign in incognito and see how i come up i should try that I forget how to do an incognito window. Roberto learned his photography from Rob. Okay. <laughs> well, you're doing great. Doing better than I am. I'll tell you that. Yeah, the search. Yeah, there's there's a lot of variables, right, involved. Uh, search depends on country and language and all of that, definitely. Um, let me see if I do shift plus, no control plus, I forget how to open an incognito window. Is it on the side new? Oh, it's on the, let's try this just for fun. Let's see. 
Olympus EM10 Mark II tutorial. Oh, I'm still number one incognito. I don't know. And if I go to YouTube, see, I'm not signed in, right? So Olympus can't spell Olympus E-M10 Mark II tutorial. I'm still number one. I'm all over the place. Now, I have no authority probably with the EM5, right? I've done hardly any videos with the EM5. See, now I don't come up, right? Oh, I'm there. But anyway, you guys get the idea. Uh, it may still be, it may still be biased on my end. I don't know. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, I thought I lost my stream. I <laughs> closed the window on the stream. Yeah, a lot of people learn from me. Olympus never called me, though. Ah, I don't need to spell. I need to spell. It's an older camera. It's like Minolta, right? If you want to look for Minolta, you would you would still type Minolta in. Um, oh, Mark, Marco knows it right off the top of his head. Control-Shift-N. <laughs> yeah. I just found it in the menu, but Control-Shift. I thought it was Control-something. <laughs> Long live the OM system. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Amazing how many people learn photography. Yeah, I'm going to try and do some more photography-based stuff. I still got one more product review. Well, technically two, but I don't know if there's any point in doing the other one. It's been like three months since I told them I would do it. I got to do one more product review. It's a gimbal. Uh, so I'm going to, I, I got to do that. And then I, then I can kind of get back to, because I got offers for other product reviews and I had to turn them down, you know, some flashes and some lenses. I hate turning down lens reviews, but I haven't made any, like, it's very stressful when you get a product in. And you got like two weeks, you know, basically they give you two weeks to try to make a video review on it. And it's very stressful to me because I'm not, I'm not that kind of guy, right? I'm not like, you know, I got to do this now. So it's kind of a more of a reflection of my personality. You know, I'm not a very committed type person. Uh, so I have no day job, right? Because I don't want to have to go in every single day. <laughs> but anyway, I got to finish this gimbal review. And um, and then I want to do more more tutorials like on Flash and stuff. But I don't know. What do you guys want, tutorial wise? I should just put a put a community tab up and ask you guys what kind of tutorials or things you want me to make videos on. Because uh, you're pretty familiar with my skill set, so you're not going to ask me anything crazy, right? Like how to do uh, drone photography. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have the slightest clue on how to use drones, but. Anything camera related, I think I can make a video. And you guys know I got Canons and Fuji, and I should do a Fuji photo walk. I finally got my Fuji camera. You know, I I was having trouble with the Fuji app on my phone, and uh, I went to check the firmware on my Fuji XT30. It was still on version 1.1 .1 from when I bought it two years ago. I haven't touched the camera in two years since I bought it. So I upgraded it's up to like 1.4 something right now. So I updated the firmware and then it connected to my phone, no problem. Because uh, I was thinking about getting one of those Instax printers that you can print from your camera directly to a little Instax. And then after I got everything working, I said, ah, screw it. I'm not buying an Instax printer. <laughs> Uh, did I click the right one? 
I did not, but that's okay. I'll I'll read this anyway. Oh, I lost my. It says here. I dig your photo walks where you show how and where you're composing images and on your real estate work is really educational. See your product. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can. Whenever, whenever I go to a vacant property and the agent's not there and stuff, I, I try to do a vlog if, if I have the time. And then um, there's a question here about, but that's not always the case. I'd say 80% of the time, um the property owners there or the agents there and i can't i can't do a vlog when they're there and then this question is uh i'm curious about that other laundromat shoot you did a while ago customer already okay with you oh no i can't um i'll try and reach out to them again but right now i still cannot do it so I'm not sure what's happening with that because business business transactions like that take a long time because it's like a six million dollar deal or something more than that maybe seven million. Sometimes they can take like a year to um, to get any traction to the point that they actually start marketing and publishing it. So yeah, not yet. I do, and honestly, right now I can't remember anything about that photo shoot anymore. <laughs> Um, all I would be able to do is show you the images and talk about how I took them because I'll know how I took the pictures and processed them and did the video, but I'm not going to remember any of the interesting stories while I was there because the laundromats were open when I went I ran into all kinds of people. Uh, Every used USA camera. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's awesome. You got Jerry and Insta360. <laughs> I know Robin, Robin Wong hates that camera, but I use it all the time. I think everything from last year I used on my vlogs was that camera bag it's in my bag down there but let me let me give you a tip you know don't don't try to get all fancy pants with it you know using like like robin wong his challenge was he tried to use it like a, a legit robin wong tried to use it like a legit cinema camera right um and trying to do all that, yeah, that, it would be kind of difficult using it as a legit camera. But if you just use it as a basic point and shoot that does video, it works great. I just put it, I just put the camera. They have a they have something called professional mode and basic mode, and I just put the camera in basic mode, and I got this uh, small rig cage for it. This is pretty awesome um, because what I can do is. I can open this and take it out. This can be. This is on the tripod, right? The 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 cage. I can slip this out and swap batteries like very quickly, right? Put a new battery on. The batteries last about an hour. You get about an hour of footage if you're vlogging, and then I slip it back in right on the tripod, just like that. And then the other thing is, there's a little door here. I just ripped that off. I hated that door because it's like on a little plastic tab or something. God, just rip that thing off, and then you can access the uh, USB and the SD card very easily. So get rid of that stupid door. I mean, you're not going to use this underwater, right? So who cares about the weather ceiling? So just take that door off. And then this this cage, I love this cage. Look how they, it's like forty bucks for this cage, but man, there's no beating this. And then I have the uh, you know the the wireless mic, and you have to get the mic adapter. 
But I think the way you vlog, you just have it on your chest, and the audio is fine. So I can I can use a 3.5 millimeter jack mic with the mic adapter, and this is only like 10 bucks. It's not like stupid expensive like the other brands. And then I have the lav mic here. So those are my tips for using the Insta360. And I don't even use the 360 part of it. I just use the simple 4K adapter that came with it. And not the fancy one-inch sensor one, just the regular. Put it in basic mode, 4K 30. And, uh, and it works great. I mean, it's no, it's no EM1, EM5 Mark III when it comes, because the video quality of using a legit camera is much better than this. But, you know, you use a DJI Now uh, action cam, and the video from that is fine, right? Anyhow. Um, and I see... Yes, John, I've been meaning to, I was going to do a photo editing stream today. I'm going to go back to doing those on Thursdays. But um, David Crooks uh, texted me yesterday that he got his microphone working because we were talking about doing this stream together uh, for a while. And he said he got his mic working. And I said, okay, let's just do it tomorrow, right? <laughs> um. And that's why, otherwise, I was going to do a photo editing stream today. But look for it next week. I should have one next week. And this weekend, I'm going to have Maddie on. And the Old Town USA, uh, I might do something in Frederick this weekend, maybe. Frederick, Maryland is really uh, very scenic that way. It's not really small town USA, but it's it's very scenic. And I'm sure there's a bunch of old houses that are neglected that I can get pictures of. And Music Sound says, I got a small rig cage for my G9. I love the quality. Yeah, it's excellent quality. They're just a little more expensive than the other brands, but it's worth every penny. Hi, Rob. If you do a photo walk with Fuji, it'll be easier for you to find your car in the city. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, <laughs> maybe I don't know why a Fuji would help me find my car any easier. Uh, what do you mean it's the go to put it on her back? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, when you say you bought it for Jerry, you literally bought it for Jerry with the, the harness that puts the cam on the back. I got one of those for Ellie. I used it once. I never used it again. Didn't seem to bother her, though. She she was running around fine with it and got some cool footage. And you said the place was really special. I missed... Uh... I may have missed um oh we were talking about I'm I'm looking at J Train's comment. He said the place was really special. It was. It was kind of interesting. There were some very unique things about that laundromat. Which once I get quote unquote permission to share the images uh then um i'll talk about kind of the special things in it insta 360 oh the thumb yeah i know what you're talking about it's like this big right i was thinking about getting one of those that's, yeah, not not like so. I went on for like twenty minutes about this thing, and nobody cares. <laughs> I thought this was for. I I went through that whole thing with you on this, and it's not even the same camera. Oh well, chalk it up to another Rob trick. 
uh, senior moment. Hey, System Mature, good to see you. And Lauren is here. Oh, my gosh. Did I hear you're going to do some street photography coming up? Get your running shoes on. <laughs> uh, not street photography, drive-by photography, where I'm in my car taking pictures. But we'll see. I don't know. I need to go out today and get some footage because it's raining today. And Peter's uh, Peter Forsgaard's 52-week challenge is weather is the challenge this week. So I need to get out and do that today. But I need to I need to do the review on this gimbal. It's really stressing me. Um because it, it's it's a fancy pants gimbal. It connects to your phone and then it does has all these extra features. But I use Android and it doesn't work with Android all that well. Most of the features don't work. It works great on Apple, but most of the features don't work on Android, at least on my Android phone which they acknowledge, right? That a lot of the features aren't going to work. But the most basic things don't work, like record video doesn't work <laughs> on the gimbal. So so now I just have a gimbal that's a little bit expensive because it comes with these fancy pants features, but I can't demonstrate any of them because they don't work on my phone. Uh, so I, I got to think about how I'm going to make that video. I mean, I bought the gimbal... Uh, well, I didn't buy the gimbal. They, I got the gimbal, I should say. I got the gimbal. And um, I only review products that I'm going to use myself, right? Or I can sell right away. But generally, if it's something I can use myself, I'll review the product. And then, because um, like, like I did the video review on this uh, HDMI switcher. Most of you don't care about that my regular viewers, but it's something I need. <laughs> so I said, yeah, send me one of those. Cause it's like a $500 gadget, man. I'm like, yeah, send me one of those. I'll review it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I got this gimbal because I want to use it. It gimbals are awesome. And this is a pretty small, lightweight one. It's right here in my bag, actually. I can get it out. Yeah, this thing. This thing is really fancy. It's got a little wheel on the side and a bunch of buttons on the front. All these things you can do. Uh, with the app, but the app doesn't work on my phone, so I'm going to have a little bit of a challenge. Not that I would even use my phone with this gimbal. I'm actually going to use it with my Insta 360 in real life. So I think that's how I'm going to review it. I'm going to review this gimbal using my Insta360, that'll be, uh, um, that'll be my review for this, which is totally not what it's for. But in real life, that's how I'm gonna use it. So that's how I'm gonna review it. So you'll, you'll see it coming up in a couple days. Um, maybe next week, cause the weather's bad today. So I can't go outside with it. And then it's going to be freaking cold this weekend. I ain't going out with a gimbal when it's like 10 below, right? Celsius, or it's definitely well below freezing this weekend. Um, yeah, I have an Apple phobia. That's true. I should start using Apple? No. Uh... Oh yeah, the sound the sound wind noise definitely definitely is bad. If you can't put yeah, I agree. There's I wouldn't use it for sound at all. I would record the sound separately if I had that little thumb thing. Look at all these apple sheep in the in the stream. And then, oh, Enrique, yeah, I used to, I remember, yeah, I used to watch a lot of my, uh, or comment on some of my videos when I did those photo walks. Oh, I see where you're going. Yeah, when I was using Olympus, I never, I know. <laughs> Sometimes it gets below 60. Wow. You know, my house is 55 degrees right now, except this office, because I got all this gear running. 
my office is 65 right now and i got this awesome space heater down here that i keep and my bedroom is 52 degrees right now it got down to 48 last night Whew, it's cold i got electric blanket though i'll be good This is when I know you guys know me really well. You know I don't like to travel, and you know I don't like Apple. <laughs> That's funny. Nature says, I have the Zion Weeble S gimbal that works well, but Olympus Arm systems do not communicate with it. Yeah, um, I've heard that. Jimmy, Jimmy Chang in the stream last week was saying that the gimbals don't work with Olympus. So I guess some gimbals, they the buttons and dials are designed to work with certain cameras. I never got that fancy with my gimbals. I just I just use them out of the box as a gimbal. All the fancy cinematic features, the focus wheel and all that crap. I don't use all that stuff. I got this gimbal. Oh, I got this gimbal specifically because um, it um, it doesn't have to be activated or use a phone or nothing to work. It just works out of the box as a gimbal, and then I can update the firmware and stuff using my phone if I need to. But uh, but this has got a touch screen and a it has all kinds of stuff that I assume work with different model cameras, but you know, this one, this one I bought myself. They didn't no nobody sent me this one. But this is like, you know, there's a lot of stuff I buy that I never do reviews on because I don't I use them for very specific things, not for, you know, it's just a tool, right? Um But this, the Zion is awesome. My very first gimbal that I bought like five years ago was a Zion. So this is a Zion Smooth 5. I have a Zion Crane 1, version 1. The very first gimbal that Zion made I have. And I've been using that up until I bought this one about a month ago. Uh, because this one, this one has the... Uh, has the handle on it like this and it has uh it's a little easier to control like to rotate and stuff the button is better and i i paid less than 200 bucks for it i got one of those uh, b and h deals so for less than 200 bucks i thought it'd be worth it to have this handle for carrying stuff and then the better control uh, jog dial or joystick here is so much better than the joystick on mine. What sense does the gimbal make if Olympus has the best? Okay, so the gimbal, the gimbal is useful for doing like slider shots and jib shots. For more cinematic type things and it's usually i have it on a pole right and you can you know yeah the stabilization is great on olympus but it's not going to do gimbal shots and jib shots on its own uh you really or slider type shots you really need a very steady gimbal to get those kind of very interesting shots or like if you want to do like a good example it's hard to explain the jib gimbal slider stuff um a good example is like, um, you know, that movie Inception where things were spinning around on a fixed point, right? You can do that with a gimbal. It's very hard to do that handheld, no matter how good the stabilization is, right? So having a gimbal on a tripod or a pole gives you a lot of options to get, make better video. Um, I'll just show you one of my videos that I made for a client, and then it'll be very, very clear. Uh,
Let's see, where's my work folder? I haven't had a job in a couple of weeks, so I'm getting hungry. Uh, where is it? There it is. God, I'm so blind. Work, and then... Where's the job that I used the gimbal on? It was the one of the laundromat ones. It wasn't this one. This is the one I can't show yet. But there was another laundromat I did. Here it is. The video in here or not? Where's the video? Are you serious? Why isn't the video in this folder? The shopping center. These are just the photos. All right, what? I really want to show you how. All right, let me look for another job. The laundromat was a good example, though. Um. Where else did I use the gimbal? Because sometimes I don't use a gimbal. I use a, a dolly. I did the laundromat on October 2021. So maybe it's in that folder in Lightroom. Let me look. Bear with me. I will find it. 2021, third quarter, fourth quarter. October 21st. Video. Show. It's coming. It's coming. See, is the finished version in here, or are these just the... Oh, these are just the clips. Oh my God. How come I don't have the video for this property? Let me look. Close that window. Some of my earlier ones I did. Crescent Park. What did I export these as? Dot MOVs? No, dot mp force. Brookfield. Oh, these are these are not real estate videos. These are for a different client. Benedict. Well, Spine Association number two, Broad Street.
Country Ridge. Did I let me let me look at this video, see if this has any. No, that's a slideshow. Oh, this has a little bit. All right. This is an older one. I'll show you this one. God, I'm sorry. That took so long just to find this. Uh, oh, you can't see it. Hold on. <clears throat> so, yeah, this is a simple panning shot I did. Let me Let me go to the beginning. This is the Google Zoom panning shot. Yeah, this stuff you can do handheld, right? This was handheld, no gimbal. This is just a photo. That was on a dolly. This is a slider shot. This is really hard to do handheld, right? This, this is a dolly. No, that's handheld me walking. But this this is kind of a slider shot, right? And I think this is walking again. This is a this is a slider shot again here. Um I think I got a jib shot in this too. That's a slider shot. These are very, very hard to do handheld. This is a simple pan. So even if you have excellent stabilization um doing doing shots like this is really hard to do without using a gimbal right like i could probably do that handheld without a gimbal this is a slider i think i got a jib shot coming this is a slider no this is a jib shot right that's a slider so That's a slider. This is, okay, so right here is a jib shot. So basically I'm coming from top to bottom. So this is not, it's kind of like sliding forward, right? Um, this is the uh, outside. And those are my clients. But anyway, that's, um, That's a little bit of what I do. <laughs> One of the videos I do. So when you're when you're, you know, when you're using the gimbal, you want to do jib shots which go like this and then you want to do slider shots that do this. It's really hard to do without a gimbal. Um And Roberto says the um Horizon, yeah, the stabilization stabilization doesn't deal with horizon. So it's a little bit um yeah, the, the 360 will do that, but the video quality is crap when you're doing 360. <laughs> um I don't need a new PC, Lauren. <laughs> I'm not buying an Apple. And system says, I never have a problem locating my photos and video, just have dated and named folders. I I do that. For my work folders, I do that, but I don't know why the that's where the video should be, is in that folder. It shouldn't be anywhere else. So I don't know why it's not there. Oh, professional video. Oh, thanks. I try. I try. <laughs> you let the earthquake walk it around. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I have enough gear to carry around. Yeah, so I don't I don't need a a jib or a slider uh on location. I did all of those shots just with a tripod. Uh 
that that particular video we just watched that was simply on a tripod and i just tilt the tripod right but the gimbal levels the horizon and then i tilted the tripod this way handheld if you watch my uh behind the scenes video where i do the laundromat video uh it's on it's on my channel. I you you see me do it all handheld with a tripod. But yeah, I, yeah, I ain't bringing a jib and a slider and but I do bring a dolly. A dolly is dolly is awesome, man. I tell you, I got to show you my dolly shot. I love my dolly shots. Um did I already close that stupid folder? The dolly shots, I did it at the spine clinic. That one I can show you, even though they didn't get the contract. I was just looking at it, it's right here. Yeah, this one. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. See, this is how it should be. This is what... So, you know, I have all the photos I delivered for the client, right? In this folder. Uh, but this is the video. This, this was mostly Dolly stuff. Yeah, that's... This is an interesting shot. You see how the door is opening on its own? Um, let me back up. This door, what I did was I, um, I opened the door and then I let it close on its own. And then I just reversed the film, <laughs> played the film backwards so it looks like the door is opening instead of closing. Uh, just a little, tr little uh, trade secret there. Uh, that's a dolly shot. These are dolly shots in here. So I have the I have the camera on a dolly with the gimbal, and I'm walking around with this dolly. It's um, yeah. These are your simple pans with the dolly. This is not a good example. But yeah, here I used the dolly. So with the dolly, I did a slider shot. But I'm just sliding the dolly over back and forth. And uh, this is just going forward with the dolly, right? This is just panning with the dolly. Pretty straightforward. I did this entire property with just the dolly. Um And of course, there's music, and they didn't give me any um, details of the place, so I couldn't. Normally, I have like little headers and pop up information about each room, but I didn't get any information like that. This is just on a dolly walking around. And this is outside. I tried to use the dolly on the. Uh, uh, I tried to use the dolly on the sidewalk, but stabilization and gimbal, no matter what, man, that thing was shaky. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, unshake it <laughs> enough, even with the digital stabilization and post processing, because I wanted to get a slider shot of the front of the building where you just kind of walk sideways with the dolly, but um, I couldn't get, uh, <clears throat> I couldn't get rid of the shake from the sidewalk because you'd hit, you know, the sidewalks have those little. Uh, slots in them and stuff. But let's see. System Tour says, I have a fluid head on my tripod so I can move smoothly in any direction. But the fluid head is heavy. All right. Um, that's okay. I'll switch over. I got this camera. Battery on this camera is still good. <laughs> um, you can see my whole setup here. <laughs> my mic. My screen, some of you have seen this before, right? The keyboard, I have another screen here. Uh, 
and then I, I keep notes sometimes during the stream. <laughs> you saw a reverse film car crash. Good for filming a punch in the face. That's cool. Um, yeah, I have um, I have a fluid head tripod that I use on the dolly. And then I mount the gimbal on the fluid head. So I got all kinds of redundancy there, I guess. Uh, it makes for a very uh, relatively unstable setup overall because there's so many pieces that I put together. You know, the dolly itself, the tripod, the fluid head on the tripod, then the, the gimbal on the fluid head. And then the camera on the gimbal, right? <laughs> so you got all these pieces stacked up. So by the time you get to the top of the rig, you know, it's it's shaking all over the place. And um, but it, I have a lot of flexibility, right? I'm looking at the wrong camera. I get a lot of flexibility uh, with that because um, now I can go do anything with it. But that's why... I leave the stabilization on even when I'm using a gimbal because there's just so many, uh, so many moving parts that it all it all helps. Yeah, the house of cards definitely. It's 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 um it's tough. So what I used to do, honestly, I used to use my uh, I had a little DJI pocket with the little small tiny gimbal head on it. That was really handy. I've been thinking about getting the new version. Um, but this is like 500 bucks. I, I don't know. I got other things I want to get. But anyhow, I think I should go because the battery on that one died. So this one, this battery can't be far behind, right? <laughs> and I've kind of bored you guys enough with my work works work work unless you think that's interesting i don't know how i do my commercial photography stuff to me it's it's kind of i mean it's nice because i'm doing photography for a living so to speak not that i make that much but it is the primary source of income and uh i you know i like doing photography i like getting getting challenges uh for lighting and stuff because you know real estate commercial property can it's very challenging photographically because of the high dynamic range and um and then doing the video work is all was all new to me when i started doing it i've been doing it a couple of years now the video work so i have a i have a routine now that i use that gets me good results that at least results that the clients like you know not that they're not that some people do really amazing video work on properties, uh, but they usually have a crew doing the work on the property videos. If it's a one-man band, <clears throat> you know, they have the big DJI Ronin cages. I don't know what they call them, but man, I've seen their gear. It's pretty high-end stuff. And they lay tracks down on the floor to get those like, it's a dolly, basically, but it's on a track, so it's like perfectly smooth, right? <laughs> um, like I said, I don't get paid enough to do all that work and buy all of that gear. So I just, I get by with, you know, these $200 gimbals. And I'd say 90% of my work right now in video, I still use the Olympus CM1 Mark III. I've used the Panasonic S5 a couple of times. And the quality is definitely better, right? In terms of recovering shadows and highlights and stuff. Um, and it really produces gorgeous output, but man, it's a it's a bitch to process. You need a pretty powerful computer. The Olympus files, even though they're 4K and, and the bit rate's about the same, believe it or not, they're a lot easier to process for some reason. I don't have any problems. But when I'm trying to process, you know, ProRes video files out of that Panasonic, man, my computer just crawls. Uh, 
it must be because it's 422 10-bit data and the Olympus is 420 8-bit even though it's uh, log and all of that. So <clears throat> it's a little over my head technically why my Olympus files are much easier to process even in log than the Panasonic. But if I'm, I'm guessing it has to do with all these bits and color depth, right? Um, but okay, I am, I'm still alive, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have enough gear to carry. I got your chat thing still up here. Very interesting how I started my business. Yeah. But okay, I am going to go. I'm getting hungry too. And my show's about to come. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Gee, look at the time. All right. So it's been great chatting with you you guys. It was great having uh, David on this morning as well. Uh, maybe we can have him back sometime. Maybe I'll do a vlog with him together. I don't know. There's possibilities are endless, right? Uh, and be ready for uh, Maddie Salanto this weekend. Uh, I'm going to have him on. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, we'll get his... Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit of like we talked about in the, the other stream about the future. I told you this battery wouldn't be far behind if <laughs> once the other batteries. So uh, all I got left now is this camera. <laughs> so I'll just talk with my hand. <laughs> so look forward, look forward to Maddie uh, this Sunday. Okay, 10 a.m. Uh, it's not even in focus. I told you, I can't have enough cameras on me, right? <laughs> um, you guys have a good weekend. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>